This video shows you how to make your 3D scenes look like comic book art. But first, let's try something different. A subtle trace of smoke was still rising from the sidewalk where Cassie blinked out of teleportation. How is this possible, she thinks. The goal was to jump next to the little boy and grab him before he fell off the ledge. But the boy was now on the opposite side of the roof, looking at her, grinning. Let's try this again, she plans, aiming to get hold of him the very moment she lands. After all, he's just a child, she mumbles under her voice. But all she manages to grab is air. Looking around, frustrated, she sees him now on the building across the street, several stories above her. A flash of light, and everything goes blank. In this scene, even though there are multiple elements contributing to make it look like a page out of a comic book, the one element that has the most impact is the use of hatch lines to represent tonal values. Ranging from comic books to botanical drawings, hatching is a well-established shading technique for printed artwork. When it comes to 3D artwork, the most straightforward way of hatching is to render out the scene and then manually draw hatch lines on top. Straightforward, but painfully tedious. A less painful way to shade 3D scenes with hatch lines is to do it procedurally, which is what I'll be covering in this step-by-step -step tutorial. With the method demonstrated in this video, you can easily change the thickness, the spacing, and the falloff of the hatch lines. And with minimal effort, you can create crosshatches by adding multiple layers of hatch lines on top of each other. And be sure to stick around till the end because the trick I used to make the hatch lines react to the light source might just surprise you. This is the model I'll use to showcase the crosshatch effect throughout this tutorial. As for the light source, I've added a single point light with a radius of zero to create hard shadows. Now, let's head over to the shading workspace to add the crosshatch effect on top of the existing material. First, let's open the Add menu and use the Search field to bring in a Mix Shader node and a Diffuse BSDF node. The Diffuse node is where we specify the color of the hatch lines, while the Mix Shader node is what enables us to add the crosshatch effect on top of the original material. Now to create the hatch lines themselves, add a math node and set its operation to less than. Then drop in a wave texture node, a mapping node, and a texture coordinate node. On the wave texture node, set the direction to be along the y-axis and change the function to triangle, increase the scale value, and make sure all the remaining parameters are zero. There are a few parameters here that affect the shape of the hatch lines. First off, we're using the camera output of the texture coordinate node, which, regardless of the shape of the model, will always give us straight lines. But for cases where we want the lines to follow the curvature of the model, we should use the object output. The direction of the hatch lines is controlled by the rotation of the mapping node, their frequency by the scale value on the wave texture node, and their thickness by the threshold value on the math node. The thickness property is special because we want the lines to become thinner and eventually disappear in areas that receive more light. Unfortunately, there's no specific node that gives us the brightness level at each point on our model, but I'm pretty sure with some simple vector math operations we can calculate those brightness levels by ourselves. To perform these calculations, let's bring in a map range node and a vector math node, which we duplicate by pressing Shift D. On the first vector math node, set the operation to dot product, and on the second one, set the operation to normalize, then add a geometry node, and finally another texture coordinate node. Remember the point light I showed you at the start of the video? Let's select that point light here on the texture coordinate node. 
This lets us use the object output of this node and get a vector that points directly from the light towards the model. By normalizing this vector and then taking its dot product with the surface normal, we are effectively calculating the amount of light that hits each point. Taking this calculated value and remapping it to a more appropriate range, it's then used as the threshold value for the less than condition, which if you recall, controls the thickness of the hatch lines. And with that bit of math magic, the cross hatch lines become thinner as they move into brighter areas and eventually disappear in the brightest regions. Keep in mind that the first parameter on the map range node determines the length of the hatch lines. while the second parameter determines the depth of the shadows. Up to this point, I've been referring to this effect as a crosshatch, but that's not entirely correct as these are just simple hatch lines, whereas crosshatches are created when there are multiple sets of lines crossing each other. Fortunately, now that we have this base hatch line effect, it's rather easy to layer many of them on top of each other. But before we do that, let me say that this tutorial is made possible with the support of my patrons. You can also support this channel and at the same time gain access to the project files using the link in the description. With that said, select these nodes, then bring up the add menu and under group options, select make group. What happens here is that Blender takes all of those selected nodes and places them into what is called a node group. We are currently inside this node group and all we need to do here is connect the rotation of the mapping node to the empty socket on the group input node. If we press tab to jump out of the node group and back into the main shader, you can see that all those nodes we selected earlier are now conveniently simplified into a single node. Moreover, we also have access to the rotation value that controls the direction of the hatch lines. So if the intention is to have multiple hatch lines on top of each other, first duplicate the node group by pressing shift D, then use the add menu to bring in a math node and set its operation to minimum. At this point, all that remains is to adjust the rotation of the hatch lines, leading us to a true crosshatch effect. Here are some examples you can use for inspiration. Now if you want to learn how to procedurally generate and animate stylized hair similar to the one you see here, watch this next video. Also, you can get the project files for this and many other tutorials from my Patreon page, linked in the description. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.